Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. It is the 23rd of December today and we're well overdue an update in Bitcoin. So we've got a little bit of a revitalized analysis in today's video. We're still looking at the major ABC running flat. However, it's uh, kind of taken a little bit of a turn where it needs a little bit of an update really. And I'll tell you why I feel like we are bullish from this point. Um, of course, every count requires its own validation point and we'll discuss that also. But I'm going to tell you why I'm leaning towards this count that I have before you. Um, so a few key, key things that we need to discuss in today's video. So first of all, we are currently beneath the 20 week simple moving average, a very key high time frame indicator. So technically, we are still in bearish territory as we speak. OK, so on top of that, we're also beneath the very important median line of the high time frame pitchfork, as you can see. So still, you can argue, you know, we've got a bit of room to the upside to overcome before we can say we're back in a bull market. But the idea is we're trying to anticipate the move above these indicators before they happen. OK, on top of that, it's very important also to cover the very important Camarilla pivots for the last four years. You can see how instrumental they have been back in 2018. You can see we found support off of the S4. The following year, 2019, we went into the R4, found resistance there, finished the year just beneath the R3. As a result, the subsequent year of 2020, we found resistance at the R3, support at the S3. And we are now in 2021 and you can see the plan ideally was for us to finish the year above the R4, which you can see we had a very good bounce off of just the other week. And yeah, it looks like we finished the week very strongly. Sorry, we finished the year very strongly and that should set up for a very strong 2022. OK, so that's the Camarilla pivot outlook. Now, on top of that, it's very important also to consider the general sentiment. This is the VIX chart. This is the basically the fear index for the S&P 500. It is very important to gauge this before looking at any other chart because it tells you the general sentiment amongst traders. OK, so we're going to run through the VIX. Very important chart, as I say, I still believe it's got a lot of downside, which works in favor of a bullish outlook across other assets inclusive of crypto on top of that we want to look at the dow jones so this is really going back to the great depression back here there has been a very good trend all the way from there onwards and i'm going to show you how we're in pretty overbought territory however we have not met the ceiling just yet i don't believe i think there's a lot of room to the upside and i think it could be a pretty sharp hysteria led bullish move here across stocks and generally across the majority of assets. So these are the things, the key points we're going to discuss in today's video. On top of that, just on the subject of fundamentals, we will take a look at the Apple P.E. ratio. Previously in 2007, we had a P.E. ratio of 37. For those who aren't aware, the P.E. ratio is basically the stock price relative to the earnings. OK, so yeah, it basically tells you if a stock is overbought or not. Back in December of 2020, we reached 35, just shy of the previous 37 high. In my opinion, it's very unlikely we top out on Apple without making a new all time high in the P.E. ratios. So I do believe we've got a lot of price discovery to the upside with regards to P.E. ratios also. So another bullish indicator, in my opinion, um, for stocks, which I believe will carry across into other riskier assets such as crypto. So. Just coming back to the charts now. So here we have Bitcoin. Now, why am I looking at this ABC scenario? So I've been speaking about the ABC for a while now, but obviously there's been different ways of an analyzing how it's going to play out. But ultimately, the target for the B wave had historically been 79K. Reason being is if we take the FIB retracement tool from the high down to the low, we're looking at the 1.236 FIB projection, which is a quite a classical target for a B wave when we're looking at either a running flat or an expanded flat. So that comes in, as you see, at 79K. So that is the preliminary target that we have right there. OK, so that's that. Let's remove that as it's not particularly needed anymore. All right. So obviously, if we're looking for the, the B wave to come up to here, um, there was many ways in which it could play out. As I say, ideally, it would have stayed above our high time frame pitch for meeting line, which I showed you were currently just beneath. Um, and for that reason, I was a little bit concerned about maybe the B wave had actually finished here. And who knows? We may have had the, the B wave finished here. It could be an A, 
B and a C to come down further. It could certainly still play out like that. But for the reasons I've mentioned with regards to the outlook on stocks, on the VIX and this potential very bullish setup that we see right now, offering some good support, which I'll go into in detail, I'm actually thinking that the B wave is still yet to finish and we still will eventually have that pretty sharpish C wave down to the downside uh, eventually, probably when we come into 79K. Of course, the B wave could come into resistance a little bit higher. As I say, 1.236 Fib projection is the classical target. However, 1.382 is also a common target and that comes in at around 80, 88K as you can see. All right, so, but I will certainly be taking profits at the 79K mark and then reassessing based on how price reacts around that level. Okay. So, as I say, pretty sharpish move down, but the the pitchfork that we've got holding the price action to the upside is basically looking at a double three for the B wave. So you've got basically a three wave move up to here, then you've got your corrective wave, and then I'm looking for another three waves up. So that's your first, second, third. Okay, so this is your first two waves that we're looking at. So first pivot, second, third. This is a modified shift pitchfork, which is holding price best and you can see very nicely we've come into the lower warning line so the good thing about this setup is we're very very close to invalidation so we'll find out if it's going to work or not very very soon if we zoom in a little bit here on the daily time frame you can see how close we really are to this lower warning line so invalidation is simply coming beneath the lower warning line the move is off and if it does come beneath here then certainly i'd be looking for price probably to come down to at least um at least 35k that kind of target okay but for now i'm running with this count which is a lot more bullish i do think that we stay above this lower warning line okay so the other reason for support you can see this red dotted line let me just explain that for that we need to go on the monthly time frame so and here you can see a very nice monthly range so in order to delineate your range you want to look at the green candles I always start off on the highest time frame so I'm here on the monthly the higher the time frame the more significant the range so here there's a very nice clear monthly range you can see here's your green candles and then you've got three red candles coming down so the top of the range is the green candle that close that precedes the three red candles and then the end of the range is basically the closing red candle here so that's your monthly range so you've got your top around 58.8k the bottom around 35k which was as i said the downside target if we were to fail or to hold on to this lower warning line here now very important within these ranges price will often consolidate within these ranges is generally considered where value can be found and the 50 percent level is also considered very very significant so basically this dotted red line here is the halfway point on the log scale between these two points okay so we've got it coming in at 45k all right you can see the 50 percent fib is at that point so that's your red dotted line there so that explains that one if we go in on the daily time frame now you'll see that with this move down we didn't have any daily closes beneath the red dotted line which is this 50 percent level within our monthly range okay so that is one bit of support giving a bit of confluence to this lower warning line support as well as the the Elliott wave scenario with the uh, the A wave, the B, and then the subsequent C. Ignore the position of the C wave. This is literally just arbitrarily placed on the charts. The first thing to focus on is the B wave. As I said, there's a couple of different potential targets for that. So one step at a time, we're looking at the 79K target to begin with. So these are the outlook that I have uh, based on Elliott wave, pitchforks, uh, I did mention at the beginning of the video something about the Camarilla pivot. So just to reiterate that one, if we bring on the Camarilla pivots, let's take off all our annotations and go on the weekly time frame. So not all of you will be familiar with Camarilla pivots. When on the weekly time frame, each range here, as you can see, this is one range. This represents one year. OK, so basically going back to 2018, I mentioned at the start of the video, S4 supports 2019 are for resistance you can see how these lines are offering excellent support and resistance they're getting respected time and time again and basically the important thing to note is that we're respecting the r4 the fact that we had a bounce off of this point as you see that came in at 43k it was a pretty good wick on the weekly time frame off of that point that was very key in my opinion 
You know, I was looking to see how we close this year. If we were to finish beneath the R4, that would be concerning because we spent a lot of time above the R4. There was every reason why we could very easily finish the year above. So if we finish beneath, in my opinion, that was a very bearish indicator. But the way things are looking, it looks like we're going to finish above the R4, which, as I say, is very bullish, but a sentiment for Bitcoin. OK, so that's the Camarilla pivots, a very important indicator within my analysis. Um, so let's just come back to the daily time frame. Um, as I say, there are a little bit of a couple of high time frame indicators that do kind of offer a bit of concern. Um, so first one being the uh, SMA, 20 week SMA. So let's just take a look at that. If we isolate the 20 week, this is our green line here on the 20 week simple moving average. So you can see this comes in at 53K. So technically speaking, if you're a more conservative trader, you would probably want to see price get above 53K, getting above our 20 week simple moving average before looking for any longs. However, I'm someone who would like to try and capitalize on uh, a better risk reward by anticipating the break of that, which I believe we could very well be seeing. Of course, until we get above that point, there's every possibility that we hit this and then rebound off it to come straight back down, as I say, potentially to 35K if this whole move uh, breaks down. Okay, the other bit of high time frame uh, resistance is so uh, we've got the 20 week simple moving average the other bit of high time frame resistance is our uh, higher time frame pitchfork which is this one which you'll see now so let's clean up the chart let's take off the other annotations let's take off our moving average so yeah this major pitchfork first second third pivots log scale original pitchfork respecting the pitchfork lines pretty nicely you can see we actually found support off the 0 0.25 again pretty nicely here um, but as you can see we're beneath the median line okay generally not something you want to see if you're looking for a bull run but as i say we're anticipating price coming above it i mean it, by the time it gets above this it could be at 58k and in my opinion you've lost a lot of risk reward by the time it does that so i'm always of the opinion it might be worthwhile to wait and well, sorry to try and anticipate the break of these high time frame indicators so that's what i'm trying to do but obviously until we do so there's every possibility that these high time frame indicators like the median line acting as potential resistance um so yeah these are all the higher time frame outlooks now i just want to zoom in a little bit and look at the lower time frame so just removing this pitchfork uh, bringing on the more important pitchfork that's offering support here. I now also just want to bring your attention to this pitchfork, which I've done a video for the group today and explained how, in fact, um, the break of this pitchfork to the upside was what I was looking out for, for confirmation that we're seeing a switch in trend. Okay, so this pitchfork, first pivot, second and third. It was holding the price action pretty nicely here. In fact, there's a pitchfork on Ethereum, which we've been focusing on within the group, which was actually holding price a bit better than this this one on uh, Bitcoin. And also that, as we speak, has also broken to the upside. So on you know, both of our benchmark assets, Bitcoin and Ethereum, we've seen this break to the upside. So above the upper warning line, it's basically telling us that this trend coming down is now switching its sentiment and starting to move to the upside. OK, so that's that was pretty key. It was something we were looking out for. And I mentioned to the group how we could actually see just by doing further pitchforks on the lower time frames, you could actually do one following that bit of price action. Also, you could anticipate this break to the upside. And in fact, you can zoom all the way in to the 15 second time frame, which is something I will often do. So literally, I'm looking at the chart from the monthly time frame all the way down to the 15 second time frame to time my trades. Um, so yeah, this is the opportunity that's setting up right now, in my opinion. So as I say, this is the support here at around 45k, looking for the run into 79k. If we fall beneath this, that is invalidation. The move is off, simple as that. And this ABC scenario um, that is forecast in the way I've described would be invalidated. In which case, we'd probably be looking at the A. B finishing here and then the C coming down here. But for now, I think this is probably the more likely scenario. And as I say, it fits in with the bigger fundamental picture when we look at the stock markets and we look at the VIX. So that is what we need to discuss next. If we can just pull that one up, if you bear with me, let's bring up the VIX. So again, it's a chart that not every one of you will be familiar with, but it's a very, very important chart. So I actually like to look at it on the linear scale here. 
So basically, as I said at the beginning of the video, it is the fear index, okay? So what I've noticed, historically, we get these kind of wedges, and then when we break to the upside, often that will lead to this surge in the fear index, but it, it doesn't play out always perfectly. You can see on this occasion here, when we broke out, big surge in the fear index. Again here, when it played out, it did the same. So I was anticipating, you know, a bit of a wedge here. We broke out and I was thinking, hang on, is this the start of a big sell-off within the stock markets because we, you know, went above this wedge. But as you can see, it looks to be a failed breakout, which we saw all the way back in this one also. So with that said, generally when you get that failed breakout, you will start coming down to these low levels within the fear index once more. Uh, an explanation for the reason for resistance can also be seen on the Camarilla pivots. So on the daily time frame, if we pull up the Camarilla pivots, I mentioned again and again the significance of these Camarilla pivots. Honestly, price gets respected at these levels all the time. So we can see here on the daily time frame for the month, because this is a monthly period here on the daily time frame, we hit the R4. That's where we found resistance. And you can see we've come all the way beneath the S4 for the month of December now. So that is incredibly weak for the fifth index which is bullish for the stocks okay so that is the general sentiment across you know for investors right now in my opinion it kind of ties in with the the backdrop with coronavirus you know we're talking about the uh, omicron variants and there is news coming out now after there's been more analysis that it could be a weaker variant than the delta variant and often these pandemics often end with a weaker variant so there's a little bit of an air of optimism right now and you might get more and more bullish news as a result of that that's not to say that this pandemic is over and it's not to say that we shouldn't still have caution but i'm just saying amongst investors there may be an element of bullish sentiment uh, that could send the stock markets surging once more okay so that's just looking at it from the vix point of view i do look at the odbs that's the oldest daily blocks where we find support and resistance you can see we're beneath the 19.8 level here so i'll be looking for the next level to offer some support of 15.48 in my opinion though we could easily come down to the 10.03 which would allow the stocks to really really rally and then if we take a look at the Dow Jones which I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the video so on the monthly time frame let's take off these camera pivots look at the bigger outlook as I said this is all the way stemming from all the way from the Great Depression here we've been in a very strong uptrend with the wave one two Three, wave four being within our 60s slash 70s period where we had the stagflation. Then we've had a new fifth wave extrapolated move with a wave one, two, three tech boom, and then a wave four with a coming down twice following the tech boom and then with the financial crisis where we hit the median line of our major pitchfork. It's a shift pitchfork, by the way, on the log scale. And then, in my opinion, we, we are yet to hit this upper warning line. I do think that is how we will finish this massive move up within stocks, after which there could be a pretty substantial pullback, in my opinion. That's for another video. But I do think we've got room to go into 44K, and that would come in to the latter stages of 2022, around July, August. So that's what I'm looking at. I still think there's price discovery to the upside here on the Dow Jones. Um, so yeah, just wanted to show that looking at the major trend, uh, there is a bit of a cyclical picture every decade. So every uh, so starting at uh, 1932, then 42, then 52, there's a little bit of a cyclical pattern as it's not that obvious, not perfect correlation, but it ties in with 2022 being a key uh, year also. Um, on top of that, I mentioned about Apple's PE ratio. Just to reiterate, I still think it's very unlikely we top this stock market without getting a new high within the PE ratios. So 37 was the high back in 2007. Uh, so I'd be very surprised if we topped out at 35 in December 2020. I do think we've got another high to overcome the 37 previously. So these are all the things I'm looking at. As I say, I do think stocks are going to be bullish. I think that's going to carry across into riskier assets. I think crypto is going to do very well. Bitcoin dominance also is looking weak, which means alts are likely to fare better than um, than Bitcoin itself. So there's a lot of opportunity there. And if you want to see regular updates from me tracking this move week on week by week, uh, we basically look at the top 15 market assets within crypto and I will occasionally do the kind of 
analysis across the stock markets when it becomes relevant to Bitcoin, such as in today's video. So if you want to check all that out, you check out my website, web618.com. There is a link in this description and we're actually going to be doing a 50% discount on the first month. Uh, of your subscription so if you're interested in that do check it out it's uh, been very popular and i do think there's a lot of value in that over the next few months as i said we could be on for a very strong move up here within crypto so as i say link for that will be in the description but hopefully that video this video has been of value today please leave a like subscribe if you're new to the channel and uh, by all means, leave your comments, give your opinions on what you're expecting. I'm sure there's lots of different opinions right now. I'm sure a lot of people are still thinking there's a lot of weakness within this chart. Um, so by all means, leave your opinions. Uh, but for now, at this with this snapshot analysis, things look strong from here. However, invalidation is very clear in and around this 45k point. If we come to this region again, I would be concerned and I would be looking for more downside at least to around 35k. So we are going to wrap it up there guys. You all take care. If you celebrate Christmas, have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. All right guys, take care.